Are you ready? Okay, well, I am. I'm ready for this lecture to be over. <laughs> All right, so we are going to be looking now at the benzene functional group, or I'm going to put aromatic here, because very often we see aromaticity in a organic molecule. So we first need to talk about maybe the benzene group. What does it look like? And then what does aromaticity mean? And then assign that to an area in the infrared that we can easily pick up. All right, so the benzene functional group is a six-membered ring that looks like this all the way around. And there's an alternating double, single, double, single, double bond that's present. Okay, that is the molecule known as benzene. Now, I wrote this in red because benzene is a death threat. Okay, maybe not that bad, but it is highly carcinogenic, and it is outlawed in some high school laboratories. You can't even let students get near it. We use it just a little bit, maybe one or two labs that we still use benzene with. It's not a lot when we do use it. So we do kind of keep track of the exposure level that you have in our laboratory with it. But that is the structure for benzene. Now, benzene with nothing else attached to it. However, this structure can be part of a longer chain. Or this structure could maybe be paired up with, who knows, another one. And we have a shorthand representation that we like to draw here. I don't like to take the time to draw the double here, double there, double there, or wherever. So very often we just put a circle in it. And that means something. That means delocalization is taking place. So in the world of organic chemistry, what you find out is that I've chosen to draw the structure this way, but I could have also chosen to draw the double bond here, and I could have chosen to draw the double bond there, and then one here. That would give me kind of the same shape, right? Well, if I do that, that gives me a choice here, and a choice there, and a choice here. And then if you look, these double bonds could actually be anywhere within this molecule as long as they're alternating. Okay, and that's where we get that circle from. So that's a very shorthand notation for benzene. Now, these two benzene rings could come together, and those could give me a different type of molecule, and maybe one could come up here on top and venture out again, and that would give me another different type of molecule, and maybe one could come down and start stacking this way. So that shape is what we call aromaticity. It is an alternating or an odd number of double to single bonds. And they are uninterrupted, meaning I can't really have a double bond and then a single, then a single, then a double. It's got to be alternating back and forth, double, single, double, single, double, single. And not only that, but these things have to be in a ring. At least one ring we traditionally see for aromaticity. They can have more than one, but one ring at least. And that's what we call an aromatic molecule. They were called aromatic back in the day because they smelled, and I'm not going to say they smelled good, but to some people, glue smells really good. So it's just really depend on the point of, of reference. You might smell benzene, and you might think it's the best smelling thing ever. Or you might smell benzene and pass out from the stench of it. So that's up to you to figure out if that's the scent that you like or not. But they were smelly, and that's where we get the term aromatic. Okay, so aromatics and benzenes show up in an infrared spectrum. We can very easily sometimes see these as long as this thing works out for me like it's supposed to and doesn't do any kind of funny thing on me. But if I look at this structure when I drew it, I did a double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, right? So there's all kinds of double bonds that are in this aromatic molecule. Now at 3,000, 
we said that most molecules show a signal at 3,000 at least. That is the presence of a carbon to hydrogen bond. That was very kind of common in every single infrared spectra that we saw. And if you don't believe me, go back and look because you won't make me out to be a liar. And we said that we can pick out a double bond. Remember, double bond was called an alkene. We can pick out an alkene by looking immediately to the left. Okay? And if I look immediately to the left, what I would see is a split that comes off of that. So this would come down, it comes back up, and then it comes back down again. And this is the presence of a double bond, a C double bond C. So with a benzene, because there is a double bond that's present, very often we would see a signal that shows me a double bond, at least. All right? However, there is another number that I can look at to help me determine if this is an aromatic. Because if I don't put anything else with this, the only thing that I know is that it's a double bond. But is it an aromatic that has a double bond? But is it really a ring structure? Is it something that looks like a benzene? That is what we want to determine. So that's kind of the first thing that I'll do. Making sure that I possibly could see that double bond to the left of 3,000. Now, benzene groups are very easy to determine if everything goes well. And what I do is I look at the 1600 mark, and then I look at the 1500 mark. And at 1600 and at 1500, I should see yet again another set of double peaks. So way down here at maybe 16 and at 15, if this was a benzene, I would see a spike that happens here and I would see a spike that happens there. Again, another double peak. We had a double peak for nitro, NO2, two peaks. We had a double peak for the anhydride because it kind of had two carbonyls in a way. So we saw two peaks. And then here with benzene, we're also seeing two peaks that show up. 1600 and then 1500, give or take. These are classified as very sharp. And they are classified most of the time as intense. Sharp meaning they're very narrow, intense meaning they go down very far on the infrared spectrum. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at a benzene um, infrared. And here is what we would call bromobenzene. And bromobenzene, I look at the 3000 peak and I come up and I see that that's really little, right? And then immediately to the left of it, I don't really see a double bond there. So in the beginning, I might not really associate this with an aromatic or with a benzene ring, okay? But I would go through the motions. I would say, is this an alcohol? Then I would go, no. And then I would say, does it have a 1700 peak? So 15, 16, 17, that's here. And I come up, and I don't really see a 1700 peak either. Well, that makes my job much easier because at no 1700 peak, it's not an anhydride, it's not an aldehyde, it's not a ketone, it's not an ester, it's not a carboxylic acid, it's not an amide, it's none of those that we've talked about. And then I say, okay, well, do we see a nitrogen-containing group at least? I don't really see double dips over here either, so it's not an amine. So I just go through the series of lists. Is it a nitro group? I don't see those two double peaks. Well, I didn't see a 1700 peak, so I know it's not a, a anhydride on me. So the next one kind of in line would be, is it an aromatic? Okay. Sometimes you'll see the double bond. And if you 
paid attention a couple of minutes ago, I said, one of the ways that we could maybe figure this out is sometimes we would look to the left of 3,000 of 3, and we would look for that double peak. Well, it's not showing up this time. However, two peaks are showing up. Remember I said 15 and 16, give or take a little bit. There'll be two of them. Well, here's 1,500. Right there is one peak, this one here. And then 100 more over, there's 16, and they're side by side, 15 and 1,600. So this one and this one. Those are the two peaks that we use to identify if it's an aromatic, and in this case, it's a bromobenzene group. All right, here's another one. Again, there's the 3,000, and I don't really see the double bond. I might see a little spike up there, but it's really, really tiny. And it's hard for me to tell that just by looking at this infrared. However, by default, if I'm thinking that it's an aromatic, I go to 1,500, give or take a little bit. Right there is a big dominant peak. It comes straight down, almost touches the bottom. And then 1,600, I come up, and there's another pretty deep signal. So there's a presence of two, and that is a benzene or aromatic for me. Uh, here's another one. This one, finally, I do see a double bond. 3,000 right there, and then right beside of that, I see a signal that comes down. That is the confirmation of a double bond. This one's a little bit different because this was much deeper, and that allows me to see more in this area. This one was really tiny. This one was really tiny. And it's hard for me to see what's to the left of that if I don't have a computer software in front of me to zoom in. All right, so there's the presence of a double bond, but is it an aromatic? I come over to 1500, I go up, I see the peak right there, and then I go over to 1600, I go up, and I see the peak there. So there's two, they're pretty dominant, they're pretty large, that maybe, possibly, is an aromatic, and that's how I would label it. Here's another one. This is octal benzene. 3,000 peak immediately to the left. I see that spike. That is the presence of a double bond. I can see that much easier because this is very dominant in the infrared. At 1,500, I come up. I see a spike. At 1,600, I come up. I see a spike there. They're not as deep as the previous ones are, but we know that there's going to be some wiggle room that's associated with those. So I see the presence of both of those peaks. I'm going to call it an aromatic, possibly, and I can put my money on it. All right, so is this a benzene structure? Well, I look at 3,000 to the left. I see the spike, so that is the presence of a double bond. I come over to the 1,500. I come up, and maybe I can include that one. It's pretty close, right? There's a 1,500 spike that's there, and I would say, yeah, that's okay, it's close enough to 15, I'll count it. So I should see a 1600 peak. I go to 16, and I come straight up, and there's actually nothing here at all. So because I don't see anything near 16, this one's a little bit too far out, 16 or below, because of that, this is not an aromatic. And if I look at the structure down here at the bottom, I can see it's not an aromatic. There is a double bond, so it is an alkene, but there's no ring or benzene group associated with it. And because of that, it, it's not an aromatic and it's not a ring structure. It's just simply a double bond in this case. All right. So that's the story with benzene. Uh, something else that I would like just for you to kind of keep in mind. Um, if I flip back to this infrared, very often if I have to think of something as aromatic, I see a lot of busyness that happens over in the fingerprint region. There's a lot of stuff that goes on, and they're very large, and they're very dominant, and they're spikes that almost touch all the way down to the baseline or to the 0% transmittance. And if I see a lot of those, then that gives me maybe a reason to think that it is an aromatic group. So if I look over here to the last maybe one-third fingerprint area of the infrared spectrum, I see a spike and another spike and another one 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 and another one. There's quite a few. 
that is often a sign that we have some aromaticity that's going on. If I flip to this one, look at those. They're all very sharp. They're all very deep, and there's a lot of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's nine or ten sharp dominant peaks on that side. That is a very good signal that we have an aromatic. The same thing's happening here. I mean, look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten or more sharp peaks over in the fingerprint region. And that maybe will probably lead me down the road to think that this is an aromatic. Okay, so if we look at this one, same kind of thing. Not as many, but I still see a handful of very sharp peaks that happen over to the right-hand side. Now compare it to this one. <coughs> Hopefully you see the difference. This one is not an aromatic. And there's a couple of sharp peaks over here, but not a lot. Right, I see a couple, two or three, and that's pretty common for any kind of group. But you compare this one, which is not an aromatic, to this one, which is an aromatic, this one's a lot busier over in that fingerprint region. And that's a very good sign that this is an aromatic for me when I begin to take a look and start assigning functional groups. So that's the story with aromatics and benzene. And in the next video, We'll continue on to our hopefully last functional group, which is a methyl attachment. We're almost finished with functional group.